So you found out that you have type 2 diabetes. What does that really mean? Basically, this is a disease of energy production. There's not enough energy made because we don't have the hormone insulin working like it should to take all the sugar that we eat that goes into our bloodstream and take it into the cells where it can be metabolized. So we've got a defect in insulin that prevents us from being able to use the sugar that's in our bloodstream normally. This is an autoimmune process. And it's just like type 1 diabetes, although it has a, a different mechanism by which it forms. And the bottom line is that when your blood sugar levels are high, it causes lots of problems in the body. The high sugar levels bind to proteins, and when they bind to proteins, they cause damage that's called glycation. And that poisons enzymes and, and a lot of proteins in the body, so they can't do the job they're supposed to do to provide you with energy and make your body function normally. So... When, lip, when levels of glucose get up to a certain point, say 170 or 180, or as normal as under 100, what happens is glucose becomes transformed into sorbitol. And sorbitol is a toxic form of sugar. It's a sugar alcohol that causes damage to the tissues. So we have to look at how do we get this problem? What, what makes it develop? And a lot of it is based on our lifestyle and, and what we eat and how much we exercise. Our level of activity is huge. Uh, it, it involves our genetics to some extent, and it also involves certain kinds of, of environmental toxins. And what happens is when we consume excessive amounts of sugar, particularly high fructose corn syrup, which is probably the worst sugar that we could, we could take in, uh, it starts to cause problems in terms of how our insulin functions. So when that happens, and we've got high levels of sugar, and we've got high levels of insulin to try and offset that because the pancreas has an automatic behavior system in it where it tries to make as much insulin as the body needs to lower blood sugar levels. So as the sugar levels become more of a challenge, insulin levels continue to rise. And when they rise to a certain point, we get what's called the metabolic syndrome, meaning that we have high levels of insulin that have a devastating effect on the body. They tend to give us hypertension, they raise our levels of triglycerides, they inactivate an enzyme called lipase, which is what regulates fat metabolism. It converts sugar into fat and causes fat to be locked in the fat cell, and we tend to get big around the middle. That's why everybody's talking about this abdominal obesity that makes up one of the factors for the metabolic syndrome. Once we have this problem of the metabolic syndrome and it gets out of hand, it goes into full-blown diabetes. And when that happens, it causes damage to a lot of tissues in our body. We wind up with premature coronary artery disease, with strokes because of the same problem of arteriosclerosis in the brain. It causes damage to our eyes in the form of retinopathy, can lead to blindness, can cause kidney damage, and it can cause lots of problems in general to our nerves. We can wind up with neuropathy. In Western medicine, we tend to rely on drugs, whereas we should be relying more on lifestyle management. This is a disease that is almost 100% preventable. It is preventable. And once you have it, it is reversible, particularly at the beginning. But you can't wait till things get too far out of hand. So what we recommend is you do, do an intensive lifestyle management program where in your diet you avoid sugars, particularly those simple sugars and particularly high fructose corn syrup. The average American is consuming 150 pounds a year of sugar now, whereas 100 years ago that was 2 pounds. So we've got to change our diet around to low carb, high fat of the right kinds of fat, and also relatively higher protein. Exercise is another huge thing. We've got to increase our exercise levels so we're doing a half an hour to an hour of hard aerobic exercise a day if we can. We need to get as much sleep as we can. We know that if we're sleep deprived for a week, everybody will get diabetes. The stress becomes chronic, chronic stress, and the next thing you know is you have outright diabetes. We need to get plenty of sleep. You need your eight hours of sleep. And we need to lose weight. Just losing a few pounds of weight can make a big difference in insulin sensitivity, which means restoring that insulin back to its normal, normal levels. So we don't want to rely on the drugs. There are probably 30 drugs that are used in Western medicine. All of them have complications and problems. Many of them cause heart attacks and, and vascular insufficiency. And there's an increased risk of death if you do have a heart attack. So we don't want to be relying on, on drugs. Throughout this site, you're going to find many examples of Avandi and Actos and some of the sulfonylurea drugs that are used to treat diabetes. You can refer to those and see exactly what I'm talking about. 
And supplements aren't the answer either. It's not a matter of taking a whole bunch of supplements once you've got a diabetic issue. That's the same thing as using a drug, except that it's not quite as dangerous. So it's up to you. You have new diabetes of the type 2 style? You can do a lot about reversing it. You can do a lot about preventing it for your family and, and people that are close to you. Take responsibility for your health. Do what you can. Live a healthy, a healthy lifestyle. You can get rid of your diabetes and you can prevent it in your family.